Right, so we're going to start uh, by looking at uh, 5.4 part 1. We'll do part 2 of it tomorrow. And then 5.5 uh, might be part of tomorrow, might be more on Wednesday. But the goal is to try to get everything done uh, by Wednesday. And then Thursday will be a review day. So we're going to look at what are called log functions. In 5.1, we looked at exponentials. And we came across some equations that had variables in the exponent. If you remember, like, um, the half-life formula. It was, uh, let's see, that was the initial amount times one half to the t over the length of the half-life. The point is, there was a variable in the exponent. And when we had to solve an equation where we ended up with a variable in the exponent, we basically put the left side in y1, <laughs> we put the right side in y2, and then does anybody remember what we did after that? We found, the we, we found where they intersected. Now, you could put the left side in y1 and the right side in y2 for this equation and figure out what x is. But that one's easy enough because 8 is a power of 2. Um, does anybody know what the answer for x would be there? Yeah? 3. 3. 2 to the third power equals 8. Very simple when this number is a power of this number. But now, you just change it to this. And now it's not quite as easy to figure out. It's not 2 to the third power, because that gives me 8. So let's try the next number up. What's 2 to the fourth power? 16. Well, now we've, we've gone too big. So the answer for x is somewhere between 3 and 4, closer to 3. How do we figure it out? Well, we use a logarithm. Logarithms are used to solve for exponents in the variable. That's what logarithms are. So we'll talk a little bit about um, logs and solve some equations, and then we'll, um, we'll look at graphing them. Just like we always do, the shifting, the stretching, but it's all the same transformations that we've done before. And this is our last category of functions that we study uh, in the algebra part of this class. Okay, this is the last, last one. Okay, so what, what is a log function? Well, it's the inverse of an exponential. So what, what does inverse mean? Well, think of it this way. If you had a function that raised something to the second power, that's square root. What function <coughs> undoes square root? Yeah? Square root. Square root. So squaring and square rooting are what we call inverse functions. The relationship between squaring and square rooting is the same as the relationship between exponentials and logs. It's like they, they undo each other. And let me show you what happens if you graph functions that are inverses. I'm not going to do logs yet for exponentials. I'm just going to do squaring and square root. So let's graph squaring. And let's graph square root. Uh, let's see. And I'm just going to look at uh, just quadrant one. So let's set the x min to zero and the y min to zero. Well, there's squaring. It's a parabola, but it'll be quadrant one. So you're only seeing half of it. And there's square rooting. Take a look at that. Does anybody notice anything about how those look? The blue one is squaring, and the red one is square root. Yeah? They cross each other on curve. Yeah, they do cross each other. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's almost basically symmetrical along axis. Yeah, there, there's a line of symmetry. Um, it's not. It's not like you'd reflect the blue one over the y-axis. That would, that would put it over right here, over here. So it's not a reflection over the x or a reflection over the y. 
But what it is a reflection over is this. Just like that. And that's the equation of the line y equals x. It's a line that has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept at the origin. So if you draw the line y equals x and you mirror image a graph over that line, that's what the inverse looks like. So inverse functions are mirror images over the line y equals x. All inverse functions, not just squaring and square rooting, but any, any functions that are inverses. That's how they look. Right, here's another picture. This, well, actually, I should leave it like that so you can see it for a second. The one in blue is an exponential. I know it's an exponential because it stays flat or it looks pretty flat for a while, and then it curves up quickly. That's exponential. The one in red is a logarithm. Now, that's not how a logarithm function looks. The calculator cannot draw a logarithm correctly. It will always draw it like that. The way it should look is this part drops down very sharply. Because this part is so steep, the calculator cannot draw it correctly. And this is a log. If you draw the line y equals x, which is that line in black, the blue one and the red one are mirror images of each other. If you folded it right on that black line, they'd land right on top of each other. Okay, now, um, look at the blue one for a second. The blue one has an asymptote. What kind of asymptote does the graph in blue have? A vertical or a horizontal? Yeah? Horizontal. It has a horizontal. It never really comes down and touches the axis. It just gets closer and closer and closer. So the blue one has a horizontal. What kind of asymptote do you think the red one has? Yeah? Vertical. A vertical. When you graph an inverse, everything that was horizontal turns into a vertical, and everything that was a vertical turns into a horizontal. Your x's turn into y's, and your y's turn into x's. So if you had horizontal asymptotes before, the inverse is going to have verticals. <laughs> if the graph in blue goes up extremely quickly, then the graph in red is going to go up extremely slowly, because they're inverses. So if you've got, let's say you have an exponential. And you plug in a number like 10. That's 2 to the 10th power. And if you do 2 to the 10th power, you get 1,024. So by the time x is 10, you're already up at 1,000. That's going up pretty quick. Now, let's try a log. Let's take the log of 10. Right, we're at 1. Well, 1,024 gave us a much bigger result. Let's take the log of 5,000. When we go all the way to 5,000 on the x-axis, we're only up at 3.7. So if you go 5,000 units to the right, you've gone up 3.7, but not very much. Right, let's do one more. Log of 99,999. You're almost at 5. So basically, if you go almost 100,000 units to the right, you haven't even gone up to 5 yet. So logarithms go up extremely slowly. It almost looks like they're flat, but they're not. They will keep going up forever, but it just goes up like that. It's, it's extremely slow, even, even slower than that. Okay, but it goes up very slow. All right, so let's talk about how you write down a log and then how you pronounce what you've written down. Okay, so first of all, if you were writing on lined paper, 
That's how a logarithm should look on line paper. The y that equals the log of the x are right on the line. The a would be below. The a is what we call a subscript. There are no exponents in this entire thing. The x is not an exponent. Okay, the x is right on the line. That's an exponent. The two. Okay, so that's that's how you write it. The way you pronounce it is y equals log, and then since the a is lower, we call a the base. Think about if something is lower, it's on the bottom. Right? The base of something is always on the bottom. The a is lower, so it's on the bottom, it's called the base. So this says y equals log base a of x. Uh, the base is usually a number, like log base 3, log base 5. We can have different bases. And if you wonder, well, what, what does a different base really mean? Well, that's a cube root. Okay, so the number, when you're doing a root, indicates the type of root you're doing. That's a cube root. That's a fourth root. All that little number means is what kind of root are you doing. It's kind of the same idea with this base. If it was a log base 3 compared to a log base 4, it's just a different type of log. Just like this is a different type of root. Still the same idea, but it's a little different how we calculate it. And the x, that's called the argument. In fact, anything that you plug into a function is called an argument. So if I put cube root of 7, Technically, 7 uh, is the argument. It's just the thing that I'm taking the cube root of. So if I write log base 6 of 13, the base there is 6, and 13 is what I'm plugging into the log to figure out the answer. And so it's just the number that's being plugged into the formula. We call that the argument. There's two bases that come up a lot. Okay? One of them is 10. And if you're taking a log with a base of 10, the name for that is called a common log. And because it comes up frequently, if you have something that's a common log problem, you do not have to write a base. So we know in math, sometimes we don't put a number down, and we assume that there's a number there. Like when you write this symbol, even though I didn't put a number in for the root, you should know what kind of root that is if there's no number there. Can somebody tell me what, what kind of root is that? Square root. So it's like, a, it's like there's a 2 there. Do we ever write it with the 2? No, not really. <laughs> but there's always a 2 there. If you write a variable in math and you do not put a number in front of it, what number is always assumed to be there? A 1. Well, it's the same idea. If you write down a log and you do not put a base, that's fine. It just means you are assuming and you're telling the person reading it, the base is 10. So you could write log of 5. And somebody who knows about logs knows exactly what base to use. It's base 10. There's only two logs that we can do on the calculator by pressing a single button. One of them is the common log. And the button for log is right next to the 7. So the log button, uh, again, that's right next to the 7. 
And if you want to know the answer to the log of 5, this is how you type it in. Log 5, and then you should close your parentheses. And the answer for the log of 5 is about 0.69897. It just keeps going. Now, remember what I said about logarithms, what they're used for. Logarithms are used to solve for exponents. This number that you just wrote down, or just calculated, that number is an exponent. An exponent on what? I'll show you. It's an exponent on this. You just figured out 10 to what power would give you 5? Well, 10 to the first power is 10. That's too big. So the answer here is less than 1. What is the answer? 0.69897. Let's try it. If you take 10 and you raise it to the 0.69897, I get basically 5. So we, by pressing log 5, you just solve for the answer to that problem. You just solve for an exponent that was in the variable. Okay, we're not quite there yet, but I'm just showing you that logarithms always give you exponents. That's what logarithms are. They give you exponents. There's one other special log uh, that we have a button for on the calculator, and that's called base e. Now, base E, there is a button on the calculator for E. E is not a random letter. E is the number 2.718. It's like pi. It's a symbol that, that means a certain number. E is a symbol that means 2.718. It, it, it keeps going. If you look at my screen, it says 2.7. 1828, 1828. It doesn't keep repeating 1828. I don't remember what the next numbers are, but it doesn't keep repeating. And this logarithm, the natural logarithm, we have a button for it on the calculator. So when the base is E, it's called a natural logarithm. Natural log. So there's an abbreviation that we use when you want to write a natural log, and that's LN. Why isn't it NL? I don't. It's LN. If you look on your calculator, right next to the log button, actually right below it, there's a button that says capital L, capital N. Ln. The log button, which gives you a common log, and the ln button, which gives you a natural log. Those are the only two logarithms that we can do on the calculator by pressing a single button. So ln is a short way of writing log bc. So instead of four letters, you write two. When we use abbreviations, we have to be careful and remember that there is still a base here. When you write LN, think of the base as being invisible. It is an invisible E for the base. Same thing if you just write the word log and you don't put a base. You have to remember that there's an invisible 10. So you'd never normally see something like this, log base e of 3. What you would see instead is change log base e to its abbreviation, ln, and then 3 is your argument. 3 is what you're taking the logarithm of.
And so any questions on the two special logarithms or where the buttons are on the calculator form? Alright, so the very first thing I told you is that log functions and exponential functions were inverses. So there's, there's a connection between them. Well, we can switch something that's written with a logarithm to get rid of the logarithm into what we call exponential form. So I'm going to show you how to change something from log to exponential, and then I'm going to show you how to change from exponential to log. I'm going to show you how to change each, each way. Um, is there anything before that? Oh yeah, one thing. Let's go back and look at the graph for one second. Um, okay. All right, so look at the graph in, in red. What does it look like the domain is? For the graph for the logarithm. Yeah. Maybe all the numbers except maybe. Like the dot put thing on the right side is that it's possible. Uh, so I'll give you a hint. There are no breaks in this graph. It is continuous when you draw a logarithm. So there's no hidden like hole or anything at one. So it's just all real numbers? Um, well, all real numbers would mean that it goes left and right forever. Does, it, does this graph go left and right forever? So what's the farthest left that it looks like it goes? But remember, it'll never reach this because we said that there's a vertical asymptote. Yeah? Greater than zero. Yes, the domain is everything greater than zero. You cannot take the logarithm of a negative number. Well, you can try. It'll just say it's not a real answer. Okay, so we're not looking at imaginaries with logarithms. So the range, or the domain, is everything greater than zero. And how about the range? How far... Up and down. Does the log go? Yep. Um, does it go infinity? Yep. It's going to go down forever. And it is going to keep going up forever because as it goes to the right, it does keep going up very slowly. So range is all real numbers. Okay, so domain, everything greater than zero. Range, all real numbers. Now I'm going to show you how to convert between log form and exponential form. I wanted to mention that first. Yeah. Is that true for every logarithmic function, or is it just that one? Well, the range is true for every log function. Because something that goes up and down forever, if you shift it up, well, it still goes up and down forever. If you shift it left or right or stretch it, it still goes up and down forever. But the domain is not always true. Because if your log function looks like this, and you take that and you shift it to the right one unit, well now it's not zero to infinity, now it would be like one to infinity. So if you shift the logarithm left or right, you can change the domain. But you can't change the range. Alright, so how do we convert um, between log and exponential form? Well, it basically just involves looking at something and moving moving three things to different spots. That's what it is. It's moving things around. So in log form, you have something like this. That's log form. You have a number on one side, you have a log, then you have a base, and you have an argument. In exponential form, you have something like this. That's exponential. You have a number on one side, you have a base, and then you have an exponent on that base, the number that's up higher. There's going to be three boxes here, and there's three boxes here. So to change between log and exponential form, we just have to figure out where each box goes. 
So I'm going to use letters because I think that'll make it the simplest. When you write a logarithm, what do we call the number that's a little bit lower? The base. And when you have a number that's below an exponent, what do you call that? The base. So the way to remember that one is the base stays as the base. So the number that was lower on the left is called the base. The number that's below the exponent is the base. The base moves right here. For the next one, let's look at the y. I told you that when you do a logarithm, you're always calculating an exponent. Logarithms always equal exponents. That's what a logarithm is. It's an exponent. Logarithm equals an exponent. So the y becomes the exponent. And the last thing is this x. What did I say we call the thing that you plug into a function? Yeah? Argument. The argument. And what's going to happen if you argue with somebody all the time? You're going to end up all by yourself on one side. So the argument ends up by itself alone. That's how I remember where these three things go. When you get a problem, you're going to have numbers filled in for some of these x's and y's and a's. Let's try one right now. Okay, so the first one, uh, that is in log form. So exponential means they want this. That's what the final answer is going to look like. Let's start with the 3. The 3 is lower. So what do we call the 3? That's your base. So that's what's going to go in that box. And logarithms always equal what kind of number? What is it? Um, so where, like, where would this one go? <clears throat> Logarithms always equal the what? Exponent. exponent. Logarithms always equal the exponent. So y becomes your exponent. And what's the x called again? That's called the argument. And the argument is going to end up where? By itself. And that's it. Now, that's not something we can solve. Like, if we knew, say, y was 2, well, then we could fill in y and do 3 to the second power and get an answer of 9. But that, that's all we could do. Questions on that? Just trying to. Y equals log base 5 of x. Yep? Sorry, where does the, I this make sense, but where does the log go? The log is gone. Log Because we're converting it to a different format. When you convert to exponential, the log disappears. Okay, so you don't, you don't have to do anything. No, when you convert to exponential, it's because of this formula, the log just goes away. It's kind of like when you take a square root of something that's squared, the 2 just goes away. It's like it cancels it out. Okay. Um, what about, um, what's my base? Matt? 5. And logarithm always equals what kind of number? Yeah. Exponent. Logarithm always equals the exponent. And what ends up all by itself on the other side? Yeah. The argument, which in this case is x. And nothing further we can do with that problem because we don't know what y is. <laughs> That's how you change from log to exponential. Let's try the other one. Now we're going to change from exponential to log. Now, when we changed the other way, we got rid of the log. The word log disappeared. If we're changing 
too long form, what do you think the first thing we should write down is? Lock. We've got to put down the word lock. The first thing I like to do is figure out my base. Um, what's the base going to be on this logarithm? Uh, 1.2. 1.2. 1.2 is going to be my base. And logarithm always equals what kind of number? Yeah. Logarithm always equals an exponent. What was my exponent in this problem? Yeah. Three. Three. And the thing that we're taking the log of is called the argument. And the argument is what was all by itself. That's that number. That's converting exponential to log. Any questions on that? Let's try this one. Okay, so we're changing this to log. Um, what's the first thing we should write down? Yeah? Uh, we don't even have a place to put that yet. Yeah, right first, write down the word log. Now we have a place to put the base. What is the base? Yeah? E. e. We've talked about this. We're going to come back to this in a second, but that's okay for now. Log base E. Logarithm always equals what kind of number? The exponent, which in this case is B. And what number is going to be my argument? Yeah. Nine. That's what was all by itself. Now, log base E, we have an abbreviation for. So we should change it to that. What does log base E change to? Yeah? Um, LN. LN. And that's one that if they did say to get the answer as a decimal, which they didn't, but if they did, you could press LN 9 and then hit enter. So the answer is about 2.198. Wait, can we go back to where the <coughs> is on the keyboard? Yep, it's right below log. Oh, okay. Well, so it's closer to the 4 than it is to 7. Yep. How do you know the difference between E representing the number and D just being like uh, a variable? Uh, you would never use E as a variable in this section. Yeah. Anytime you see an E, it's the number 2.718. It'd kind of be like in math using this as a variable. You never use the Greek letter pi as a variable. Or like I. Yeah, I is a bad letter to use as a variable. Yeah. O is a bad letter to use because it looks like a zero. So some letters are not, not the best. Questions on that? Okay, so now let's show that it's actually just like the problem I started with when I started the video. Log base 2 of 8 equals 3. Well, there's only one thing we know how to do. It's something that's in log form, and that's change it to exponential. Um, so, Quinn, what's my, what's my base? Uh, two. Two? About my exponent? Three. Three. Logarithm always equals the exponent. And what's going to go on the other side? Yeah, the argument. That's what was all by itself. Does 2 cubed equal 8? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So we showed that it was true. All right, let's try this one. So kind of like the last one, but this time they don't tell us what it should equal. So we need to solve it. Well, let's try the only thing that we know how to do. Um, Lucas, can you tell me how I would start to rewrite that problem? Five would be your base. Yeah. And x would be your exponent. And what about what goes on the other side? One over twenty-five. Now, if you get confused because it's 5 to what power gives you a fraction, think of it like this. It's 
not the same problem, but it should give you a hint. If you can figure out 5 to what power gives you 25, it's basically the same idea, except think about what kind of number you have to have as an exponent that causes your fraction to flip. So anyone think they know? First of all, what kind of number is x going to have to be to make your fraction, to give you a number that flips? Yeah? Uh, negative. Negative. So the negative causes something to flip. And now, just figure out what power gives you 25. Yeah? 2. 2. So x equals negative 2. The negative causes it to flip. And if you don't remember that, that's the rule. A negative exponent causes that to go to the bottom of the graph. If it was just 5 to the x equals 25, then the answer would have been positive 2. But it was 1 over 25, so negative 2. Any question on that? So now let's try solving one where, let's see, the last one had an x on the right side. Now, this one has an x for the argument. The right side is a number. Right, so let's rewrite it and see what happens. Yeah. All right, just kind of laugh at me. Where did you get the 52? 52? Yeah. Uh, that's 5 to the second. Oh, okay. Yeah, 5 to the second. Um, how about this one? How are we going to rewrite that? Yeah. Um, well, the base would be 5. Yep, base is 5. And then, do you, or do you just want me to say the whole thing? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so it would be 5 to the 1 and a half equals x. Yep. There you go. So 5 is the base, 1.5 is the exponent, and the argument ends up by itself. Uh, this is one that we could plug in. And do 5 to the 1.5, we get about 11.18. Any question on that? All right, so we did the variable on the right, we get the variable as the argument. Let's try one where the variable is now the base. So we've done one with the variable in every spot. Um, Eileen, can you tell me what my base is here? Uh, the 3 is up on the line with everything else. So the 3, that's the argument. Uh, the x, yeah. So the base is what's lowest. You know, think about if you're building a building or something, and you want to talk about the base of the building. The base would be the thing that's on the bottom holding it. It's the lowest part. So x is the lowest, so that's my base. Um, what about my exponent? Yep. Power of 2. Yep, it's going to be a power of 2, because the logarithm always equals the exponent. And what ends up by itself on the other side? Yep. Uh, 3. Yep. Uh, now, how do we solve that? How do we get rid of that power of 2? What? Yep, we're going to square root both sides. And remember, normally when you take a square root, you get two answers, a positive and a negative. But remember what we said about logs. The argument and the base, I don't know if we said the base, but both the argument and the base have a domain of 0 and up. You cannot use negative numbers in the base or in the argument. So do not worry about the negative answer when you take the square root. So the answer is just positive square root of 3. Okay. Any questions on that? All right, so the second part for the logarithms. 
this might be the last thing we do. I don't, I don't want to rush through it just to get it done. So if we have to do some of this lesson tomorrow, that's fine. We have a whole extra day this week. So these special properties, they're more like patterns. There's no arithmetic or any kind of calculation you have to do. It's a pattern that when you see this pattern, you automatically know what happens. Like here's an example. When you see something like that, that's not a logarithm. But when you see something like that, that's a special pattern. When you square and square root, what always happens every time? It always just cancels out. And the answer is what was right, right there. It would be just x. Same idea with these. These are special patterns where things cancel out, but it's with logarithms instead of problems without logarithms. So I'm going to use a variable in these formulas, and the variable has to be a positive number. That's not 1. It never would be 1, so you don't have to worry about it. But it has to be a positive number that's not 1. Here's one formula. a raised to the log base a of x. This is exponential form. The reason it's exponential is because if you erase what's in all the boxes, and you look at it, you have your three boxes. Base, exponent, something on the other side. There's no word log here. It fits this exact pattern that we did earlier, right here. That's exponential. What you put in those boxes, or you can put anything you want, it's still exponential. And if you set it up so that in the exponent there is a log and the base on the exponent matches this number right here, the answer is whatever was sitting right there. It's like these two things just cancel each other out. And the only reason they cancel is because the a's are the same. If those numbers are different, then you cancel them. So it's a special pattern. And we're going to we're going to do one with numbers in a little bit, just like that. Yeah? Is that part squared and blue? Is, what if A does equal 1? Or is that just always true with logarithms? Uh, I have to double check what happens when A equals 1. I'm trying to remember why the book said... Um, oh, that's why. Because the logarithm of 1 is 0. And sometimes when you put zeros in equations, you're not allowed to do that. If you can't multiply both sides of an equation by zero, zero is kind of a weird thing when it comes up with equations. So that's probably the reason why. Because the logarithm of one would be zero. I have to double check. Alright, so that's the first one. And those two numbers are the same. That cancels out. And the answer is whatever was sitting right there. Or the second one. And if you view this one as your with your boxes, and you erase what's in all the boxes, is this one log form or exponential form? Yeah, that's log form. Doesn't matter what you put in the boxes, it's still log form. And it says that log base a of a to the x equals x. So what happens is when these two numbers match, it's like everything here cancels out. And the answer is whatever was sitting right there. Let's look at why this one is true. So here's your three boxes. Box 1, 2, and 3. What's my base? Which box is my base in here? Yeah. First one. First one. So I'm changing this to exponential form. I want you to see what happens. So A is my base. That's box 1. Uh, what about box 3? Logarithm always equals what kind of number? 
Yep. Exponent. Exponent. So there's box three. And what's going to end up by itself on the other side? Yeah. The argument. The argument, which is box two. Is that true? Does a to the x equal a to the x? Yeah. Something always equals itself. Of course. That's all that rule two is saying. This is called the reflexive property. And in geometry, you might see like A equals A. Something equals itself. That's all rule two is. Is it saying that something equals itself? It's saying it as a logarithm. A little bit different than how you're used to seeing it. But it's still the same basic idea. Let's try this one. Log base A of A equals 1. So if you did log base 3 of 3, the answer is 1. Log base 6 of 6, 1. When the base and the argument match on a log, the answer is always 1. Let's rewrite this in exponential. And this is a rule that you already know from Algebra 1. I'm numbering the boxes because I have two boxes with the same thing in them, so I want to know which one is which. What's my base here? What, what box? Yeah? First box. First box. A is my base. Um, what's my exponent? What box is that in? Third box. Okay. And what's going to end up by itself? The argument, which is in box two. All that rule three is saying is if you raise anything to the first power, you get the same thing back. This is how you'd see it in algebra one. This is the exact same rule written as a logarithm. Same idea. Anything to the first power is itself. And that's rule three. And rule four. I actually kind of already mentioned this earlier to you guys when somebody asked me about something else. If you take the logarithm of 1, the answer is always 0. doesn't matter what the base is. So for this rule, I wrote up top that a can't equal 1. I don't see a reason why a, oh yes I do, yes I do, because if you let a equal 1, you divide by 0. You don't know why yet but you will tomorrow. So definitely A cannot equal 1. You would end up dividing by 0. That's why I wrote that. All right, let's rewrite this. Um, what's my base here? Yeah. A. A. What's my exponent? Yeah. Zero. zero. And what's my argument, which ends up by itself? Yeah. One. So all that rule 4 is saying is a very basic Algebra 1 idea. Anything to the 0 power is 1. 5 to the 0 power, 1. 6 to the 0 power, 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. This is how you see it in Algebra 1. That's how you'd see it as a logarithm. So on the right, that's just the explanation why it's true. What's on the left is the actual formula we need. So let's try um, a couple of these ones. Okay, so what we want to do is look on the right and then compare that to the formulas on the left and see if you can figure out which formula the pattern matches. And when you can figure out where the pattern matches up, you use the formula to get the answer. So which pattern does that one look most like? Okay. Yeah, that's pattern one. All you've done is change the a to a 2, and you've changed the x to a pi. So based on rule one, think about what's going to cancel out, and whatever you'd be left with is the answer. So what would be the answer for this one? The answer is pi. The answer is what is ever 
right there. So x equals pi. Now, if this was a 2 and that was a 3, well, then it doesn't work. They have to be the same. Um, how about that one? Log base 0.2 of 0.2 to the negative 4. See if you can see which rule it matches. Okay, which pattern does that one match? Rule 1, 2, 3, or 4. Yeah, that matches rule 2. Because you have a log, and you have a base of 0.2, and then you have an argument that has a base of 0.2 with an exponent. So it's exactly the same pattern. So what uh, what's the answer for B? Yeah. Four or negative four. Negative four. All right. Let's try this one. The ln of e to the kt. It's a little bit different, um, but it does match one of those rules. <coughs> See which one it matches. You've got to do a little bit of rewriting first. Yeah? Huh? Wouldn't the three because you Um, well, this does mean something. This entire thing means something. What what does Ellen well, actually we don't even need to think of it that much? You could just start with this part. What does Ellen mean? Yeah, log e. Log base e. Base e. So it means log base e. What's in that box means what I just wrote right there. Now write the rest of it out. E to the kt. Now does anybody see which one it matches? Yep. Yeah, that is the second one. Because you have a log, you have a base, and then the argument matches it. So what would be the answer of log base e of e to the kt? Yeah. K, t. k times t, whatever k times t is. Uh, I didn't do one for the third and fourth one. Let's just make one up. So d log base 6 of 1. What rule does that match? Log base 6 of one. Yeah? That, that's rule four. And what's the answer here? Zero. Zero. Any questions on those properties? Yes? So the answer to D is zero or x equals zero? Uh, the answer is zero. Okay, so it's not okay. Yeah, because there was no variable in there really. So Right, so that's the, the second thing. Um, let's put the properties up. I don't think we'll get through all the examples, but um, we probably have about 15 minutes left. So if we do about 5 minutes, 10 minutes, we'll have about 5 minutes to finish the line. That's okay. So the last three properties I'm going to give you these are properties to take logarithms and either split them apart, so you can take one log and split it into two, or you can take two and combine them into one. So here's the first property that involves a product inside the argument. If you have a product of two things, it doesn't even have to be numbers, it could be it could be letters, just like this. But if you multiply two things together inside the argument, and you want to split that apart into different logs, you can split it into two logarithms. The base on each log that you split it into is exactly the same as the base you started with. The base never changes. Think about like in real life. If you take a piece of wood and you split it, it's still the same type of wood. Take a maple log and you split it, it's still maple. You get two pieces of the same type of thing. So you have two logs, each with the same type of base. The first argument is the first factor, and the second argument is the second factor. 
And if you had a third argument, it could be a third factor. So you can you could actually split more than two. But I'm just showing it to you for two. And here's here's an example. I'm splitting up basically log twenty. That's what I'm splitting up. And I decided to write twenty as four times five. So we can write it as log four plus log five. And I'll show you, let me show you that one. Um, but let's do it on this calculator. Let's take the log of 20. And now let me write it as log four plus log five. I get the same thing. What's another way you can multiply two numbers to get 20, besides 4 times 5? You could break up 20 as 2 times 10. So you could do log 2 plus log 10. And it's the same thing. Any two numbers that multiply to give you 20 would work in these two spots. 40 and 1 half. Yep, that would work fine. So it shows you that a product splits as a sum. Or if you read it the other way, a sum combines to be a product. So if you have like log 3 plus log 6, I could write that as log 18. Multiply the 3 and the 6 together to combine it. And I didn't put a base here, so what base would I be assuming? 10. But the base doesn't have to be a 10. It could be any, any number that you want. Whatever the base is, just keep it the same. Yeah? I'm trying to wrap my head around this. So the log 2 plus log 6, that would be written on the left side as log a3 plus 6? Uh, that would be log 18. So then why is the example we just used 4 times 5? Um, so I just used, instead of a 4 and a 5 in these two spots, I just showed another example with a 3 and a 6. No, I know, but why is the first one being so? You can write it in the same way. First, we had written it as ten, or sorry, as log a to the, and then in the parentheses, the twenty. It would be the same. That's, it would be communicating the same thing. The equation. She's saying like that four times five would twenty would still be true. Yeah, this is yeah. This is just breaking up twenty into four times five. Is that what you meant? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any product you can split as a sum. You could write that as like two times ten too. You could write it as two times ten. You could write it as forty times one half. Yep. Okay. Any two numbers that multiply to give you twenty. Uh, okay. So when we have a product, it turns into a sum. What if we had a fraction here? Anyone guess what a fraction would turn into? Yeah? If it was a fraction, would you subtract it instead of adding? Yep. So when you have a fraction, you can subtract instead of add. I'm not going to type this one in, but there's, there's an example with numbers. So fraction turns into subtraction. Now, subtraction, the order is important. Splits into two logs that both have the same base as the original. The first argument has to be the numerator, and the second argument has to be the denominator. The denominator has to come second. So that, that's important. And there's an example with numbers. And if you have log of four fifths, you can write it as log four minus log five. It's usually more helpful to take two things that are separate and combine them together rather than to take something that's already combined and split it. Splitting it makes it bigger. We usually don't want to do that, but we'll, we'll practice that. Okay, and the last rule. The last rule says that if you have an exponent on your argument, you can take that exponent and move it in front. And you 
can't just always move exponents in front. You can only move exponents in front if your problem has a log. So like this one. Log base 10 of 3 to the 5th. If you don't want this 5 as an exponent, because it's inside an argument of a log, you can move the 5 in front. And it works perfectly fine. So exponents that are arguments to logs can move in front. And that's especially handy when this is a variable, because now we can get the variable out from being an exponent. We don't want variables in the exponent. That makes problems hard to solve. When it's a number like this, why would you move the number in front? I don't know, with a number you, you probably wouldn't, but with a letter you definitely would. And does anybody remember when we talked about square roots and cube roots, all the different roots, we talked about how you could write square root with an exponent instead of the radical symbol. Does anybody remember what exponent is the same as taking a square root? Yep. To the one half, yes. And the reason that's important is because if I give you a problem, like this, and I say do not leave exponents in your final answer, and you leave an answer like this, and I mark it wrong, and you're like, well, I didn't leave any exponents there. You did. When you write square root, square root is hiding an exponent of one half. So this really means that. Square root of x is the same as x to the one half. It's the only exponent one that's a little tricky because the square root symbol can hide the exponent. And where can I put this one half? Since it's an exponent inside a log. Yeah? In front. I can put it in front. That's one that always seems to trip people up. They forget what square root really means to a one half power. Yeah. If you're doing a cube root, you put the one third in front. Yep. If you had a cube root, that means x to the one third, and you could do the same idea. So those are the three properties that we use for combining or splitting, separating logarithms. We'll practice some examples of using those tomorrow. Uh, I'd say we have about 10, 10 minutes left on this one. Uh, but again, we have a whole extra day this week, so not a big deal. I want it to go smooth. If we were to type this, like on a keyboard, would we type, and, and there was no subscript in the equation, would it be, would you type log space x, or would it be just log x? Like to type all this out? Yeah. Um, you can't do it if you don't have subscripts and exponents. So you would, like, like for that one with the log, with the, the x and the radical one? Yep. Would that be a subscript of 1? Or would it be? This, that one's a 10. Or, sorry, yeah, a 10. Yeah, that one was a 10. Yep, that would be below the line. So, like, you can't type it without, even if it's just log x. You can't type it uh, if you're doing a common log, then you don't need the subscript. And if there were no exponents here, I mean, you could type something like that on the calculator or on the keyboard. I would put it in parentheses. So you're not, there's no space in between the log and the, it just, when you write it, it looks like there's a gap in between where the log and the three is. It's not like how you write something with a variable. Like, you would just write 3x. Would that just be log 3, or would it be log space 3? Um, you could type it either way. Okay. I would, uh, I don't know. I've never typed it. Uh, I guess I would probably leave the space out. Okay, so log 3. Yeah. Okay. What you wouldn't want to do is this. Yes. Okay. That, that's not good. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Yeah. 
So if you put a space, then that technically is okay. But if you don't want to use the space, then I would put it in parentheses. Okay. Don't smush it right up against it. Okay. So. So tomorrow we'll we'll do a couple of the examples. We were almost done. Okay, um, one through six, that's okay. Fifteen to sixteen, that's okay. Actually, we did most of it. The only thing we didn't get to was twenty-nine to thirty-two. I'll probably give those as part of tomorrow's homework, but you don't have to do 29 to 32 for tonight. We'll finish up 5.4 part 1 tomorrow. Uh, we should get through all of part 2, I think. I'll see you guys tomorrow.